I want to get into the swing a little bit deeper now. With the perfect connection swing, remember, I break the swing down and make it real simple. We have the L to L drill. I still encourage you at this point to work on that. This is crucial to creating speed. As you set up, and I want you to start your practice sessions this way. Just set up here, swing back, form the letter L, swing through, form the letter L. That is important. Obviously, you won't have to stop. You can just do this in motion, just L to L. You will start hitting a lot of solid shots this way. The key is, is as you do this, you are creating lag. You are getting your hands ahead of the ball. That is important. I still encourage the towel drill where we put the towel underneath our arms and we literally just swing back halfway where the club is parallel to the ground, swing through halfway to where the club is parallel to the ground. I gave that drill to a tour player the other day. He was struggling with wedges. We got him to work with his body. So it doesn't matter what level, if you're trying to break 80, if you're trying to break 70, that is an important drill that will allow you to continue to improve. As we get into the swing positions, let's talk about swing plane. There are different swing planes. We have the shaft plane, which would be commonly, if I drew a line right up the shaft as I set up, we have elbow plane where if I drew it from the hosel through the elbow, there would be a line just that way. Or what I teach is the shoulder plane, which goes from the hosel up through the shoulder. That is important because that will allow you to hit the ball better and farther. As long as the swing matches on both sides, the club is on plane. If you think about normal golf instruction, they always use shaft plane. And they say, okay, to get the club on plane, we must get this club to be parallel to that original shaft plane. So I'm gonna have this club here just to dictate what shaft plane is, elbow plane, and shoulder plane. So as we do this, we are going to work the club back in this position. And this would really be kind of position one where the club head is outside the hands. It's kind of just as I'm putting, all right? So then we create the L. And the club at this point, the hands are in the middle of the chest and the shaft is going right through my shoulder. That's what we want. From here, we just turn our shoulders. And this is what I want you to understand. The perfect connection swing is a three-quarter width swing, is not a three-quarter length swing. I've had a lot of questions on that. Many people discuss the fact that, hey, your shoulders turn 90 degrees, so if I get your shoulders to turn 70, it's a three-quarter swing. The problem is most tour players do not turn their shoulders 90 degrees. When I did studies on motion golf, the average tour player's shoulder turn is 117 degrees. Sergio Garcia has 147 degrees of shoulder turn. So you can't put a number specifically to shoulder turn. I do not care how much shoulder turn you have as long as you do what you are able. I can have some guys, I can have a tour player that can turn more, but as long as I create width, that's okay. I can have a, a guy that might be 80 years old that does not have the flexibility and he can only turn his shoulders to here, but he can get his arms into this position. So if you can imagine myself standing in a doorway, the perfect connection swing is three quarter width. In other words, my hands are to the right side of my head in this view, and I've got my 90 degree angle. You can see I've got 90 degrees with my wrist hinge. I've got 90 degrees with my elbow. That is important, all right? That is found fundamentally or the foundation of the perfect connection golf swing. The 90 degree angle is where you create power. Okay, so as we go back here, the club works back, back into the middle of my chest, shaft through the shoulder, and then up. You can see there's a nice triangle right over my right shoulder. That's what we want. Now, as we come down, the body shifts. As the body shifts to my left toe, it goes really from my right heel to my left toe. The club comes down right through that same position. It will work a little bit shallower there, but not much. It's gonna cover the hands, back into the triple stack position, which is where my weight's left, and back through up into this position, into the window of opportunity. What that looks like from face on is almost a putting motion, the L up to there, the shift, notice the lag that I've created, the L is still maintained, the triple stack position where my weight is forward, 
You can see that we've discussed that before with my right heel working in, not that way, and up through into the window of opportunity. Those are the positions you're working on. The most common fault I see is getting this right arm behind you. And the drill I want you to work on with that is to place the, your right hand in front of you, take your left hand and hook it underneath your right elbow. As you do this, just swing up and feel how you keep the right arm in front of your body there. That is a great drill to do it. What I see people doing is they get the right arm this way. From this view, I always call it, you're trying to show me your guns. I don't want to see your guns. If you swing up, you can't see my bicep. That's what we're looking for there, okay? So this drill here, you're just gonna swing up, keep the elbow in front of your body, there. If you get confused on that, set the club on your shoulder, turn, lift. That's the position we are looking for. So understand the positions in the golf swing for the perfect connection swing, we work on the shoulder plane. We are also trying to keep three quarter width, not necessarily a limitation on your shoulder turn. If you are flexible and you can turn, that's fine. Don't go any beyond what you are able. Remember the thoracic spine, the middle part of your spine is what is designed to rotate. When you try to force a turn, that's when the lumbar, the lower area of your spine, tries to rotate and that is not designed for rotation or mobility. It's designed for stability. So that's where people get injured. So I hope you understand the positions there. And as you do and you start getting a clearer understanding, just the knowledge there will allow you to play better golf.